Hello everyone, it is so nice to have the opportunity to learn together and to share Dvar Torah. The month of Tishrei is notorious for its extensive set of holidays. From the stirring sounds of the shofar all the way to the vigorous dancing on Simcha's Torah, the first month of the year is a month of immense closeness to Hashem and celebration and prayer and mitzvot. That's the month of Tishrei. And many of the holidays in Tishrei, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, seem to make a lot of sense. But Sukkot doesn't seem to make so much sense in the month of Tishrei. Because as is commonly asked, if Sukkot, as the Torah explains, is because Hashem protected B'nai Israel when they departed from Egypt, shouldn't Sukkot be instead in the month of Nisan and not in the month of Tishrei? So why is it in Tishrei as opposed to its more intuitive location in, in Nisan? And the most celebrated answer to this question appears in the tour, originally in the Ramban, that it would have been impossible for many people to celebrate Sukkot actually outside in a sukkah because of the weather conditions. So if you had put it in Nisan, it would have been uh, untenable for many people. Therefore, the Torah puts it in a much more reasonable time of the year in, you know, in Tishrei, where maybe people are more capable of sitting outside. And therefore, it's not in Nisan and it, it is in Tishrei. While there certainly was some merit to that answer, it seems to ignore the significance of Sukkot being placed just five days after Yom Kippur, and specifically in the middle of the month of Tishrei. And it's not only that there's this calendrical connection between Yom Kippur and Sukkot of just being a few days apart. Even in the Torah's presentation of these two holidays, there seems to be a lot of substantive overlap between these two days. Just to give a few examples, and this is something that Mori Virabi of Rosenzweig has developed at length, Sukkot and Yom Kippur are both prefaced with the word Ach, Ach, Basar, Lachodesh, Hashvi, Hazeh, Yom Kippur, Hakipurim, Hu. And regarding Sukkot, Ach, Bachamisha, Asar, Yom, Lachodesh, Hashvi, regarding Sukkot, Ach as well. Elsewhere, the Torah, when it describes, the, the, describes these days, it talks about the reason behind these days. Kiva Sukkot ho Shavti, because I protected B'nai Israel and I put them into booths when they departed from Egypt. And by Yom Kippurim, because it's a day of atonement, and that's why we have this day. So the Torah provides reasons for both of these holidays, which is not always the case. Third, regarding the Torah's usage of the term Mikra Kodesh, by Yom Kippur, the Torah doesn't connect it with its typical Isser Malacha, prohibition of labor. The Torah connects Mikra Kodesh to V'inisem Esnaf Joseichem, so the obligation to afflict oneself on Yom Kippur. And in the more extensive presentation of Sukkot and Amor, the Torah doesn't even mention Mikra Kodesh. And while there's a lot to say about that, what emerges as being clear from these different textual uh, nuances is that there's a substantive connection and overlap between Sukkot and Yom Kippur. And so we want to figure out is what exactly is the nature of, this, of the relationship between these two days? Why is there you know, Sukkot in the calendar just five days after Yom Kippur? And more than that, why is the Torah presenting them as substantively linked? And in order to answer this question, we need to understand a little bit both about Yom Kippur and Sukkot. And if you take a look in the first chapter of Lichtenstein's book on Shuvah, the way he frames Chuva and really Yom Kippur is that it's all about missed opportunities. That in our lives, we all the time, unfortunately, don't take advantage of opportunities to grow, to do mitzvot, and instead we make errors, we commit sins. And Chuva and Yom Kippur is all about the opportunity to redress those errors, to move ahead, to grow. And because of the fact that you have that opportunity, the Rambam writes, and this is the only place the Rambam writes that there's an obligation to do tshuva. The Rambam says on Yom Kippur, there's an obligation to do tshuva because the opportunity granted of its being a day of slichu mechila for individuals and for rabbim in the community. And the obligation of tshuva stems from opportunity. The Sefer Achinach also has a formulation that seems to dovetail with the Rambam's point. And Rilchenstein beautifully writes, that tshuva is not just an opportunity per se. It is an opportunity to amend all missed opportunities. 
And if tshuva is all about trying to amend for missed opportunities and, not, and for not having taken advantage of the opportunities that the year he provides us with, then what could be more perfect as a follow-up to Yom Kippur than Chag HaSukot? Because if Chag HaSukot is defined by one thing, it's defined by being one of many opportunities. Even before Sukkot starts, starting from immediately after Yom Kippur, we're supposed to start building our sukkahs, and there's halachic significance to the building of the sukkah. We continue, and we get to the Chag itself, and this is the only holiday with both uh, the Dalad Minim and the Sukkot, two mitzvos hayom, different from other holidays. And the obligation of yeshiva besukkah, of sitting in the sukkah, it's not just to go, sit there for a moment, make a bracha, and get out of there. Yeshiva besukkah is supposed to be an all-engrossing experience where one really makes their dwelling place completely in the sukkah all day throughout Sukkot. And every single day of Sukkot, in contrast to Pesach, there's unique korbanot, there's a full halal. Sukkot is a holiday of opportunities and so many mitzvos and chances to, to engross yourself in Avodah Hashem. And so in the aftermath of Yom Kippur, where we're supposed to show God that we are taking it seriously and all our commitments to take advantage of opportunities and what we did shuva for, Sukkot is the perfect way to actualize that and to demonstrate it to God. And so the notion of Sukkot being put right after Yom Kippur is not an oddity, it's actually beautiful, a beautiful way of connecting Yom Kippur to the rest of the year and demonstrating our, our commitment to God and that we've sincerely changed and improved. So Bezra Hashem, uh, we've had the same experience and this ideal experience of transforming and improving on Yom Kippur, taking advantage of the opportunity of tshuva, and now with the Chag HaSukot ahead, have the ability to really show and demonstrate to God our commitment to Him by observing all the mitzvos and taking advantage of all the opportunities that we have on this wonderful holiday. Good Shabbos and Chag Sameach.